Hello everyone. In this 14th lesson of how to make your first game in Unity, we are going to add in a fade screen and we're also going to add in a way of getting game over via obstacles. Before we get into it, remember to subscribe to see more and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I upload. It really helps me out. Now, on with the show. So, a fade in as I explained in the last lesson, is basically a way of fading from black into our scene. Currently, our fade out lasts two seconds, but I would like our fade in to last just one second. So we're going to do this so as it plays a fade in animation every single time that we load the scene. So, game object, UI, and raw image. And again, this works in the exact same way. So we just need to stretch the anchoring, zero everything out. There we go. And essentially, I guess you don't really need it to be black if you don't want it to be. It can be any color you want. I'm just using black as it's probably the most common color that you would see with fading. White is another common color if you want to use that. Um, so, yes, we need to keep this as the alpha as 255. So obviously the inverse of that would be zero, which is the fade out. So we need it to go from 255 to zero during the course of the animation. And I'm going to change this to fade in. And what we'll do is we'll go to our animations folder, click on animation that we added in last time. Remember that tab? And we'll click on create. Now what we'll do is call this fade in and save and once again we just need to press the record button and we're in keyframe zero which is the very first frame so remember what we need to do is reset this so as it acts as the first keyframe so we can just play around with that and set it back to 255 and there's our first keyframe set and as i said we need this to last over the course of a second so we need to set this to 60 obviously because we're 60 frames a second and now set this as zero on the alpha and close that and press the record button once again to stop the animation head to project click on fade in in our animations folder and untick loop time we're not going to turn it off we're going to keep it on so as every time we play the scene we fade into it so fading in and out is really as simple as that. It's quick and it's easy. There's no drastic things you need to do. And with this kind of fade in, we don't even need to worry too much about scripting it. We probably will use a script a little later on in the series. It depends on how we establish different UI elements on our screen. But for now, we don't need to attach a script to this at all. So next thing we need to do is find a way of getting game over hitting a spiky kind of object. So let's zoom in, let's double click on our ground to zoom in. And like in the same way we have previously with our coins, we're going to use the same kind of mechanic to manipulate it so as we can get game over. So we're basically combining several elements that we've previously learned into one single element. So let's go to game object, let's go to 3D object and cube, obviously because it's the most primitive and easiest object to deal with. Let's zero out the position and let's have it as, let's have it as four tall. And let's bring it upwards and let's bring it over here for now. Obviously it doesn't look very threatening. So we're gonna use a cool little uh, way of making it look a bit spiky. And that's just simply adding some extra cubes inside and rotating, really cool idea. So all you need to do is right click on the cube and let's go to 3D object and let's go to cube and then uncouple the cube out of there. So drag and drop it just to there. Now let's have the scale set as one by one by one. And let's have the rotation as 45 by 45 by 90. I guess we don't really need it as nice. You have it as 45 as well. It looks a bit strange as 45. So I might just have it as zero. So now we can see these little things protruding out of there. So I'm going to hold control, press D to duplicate, bring it down a little bit, hold control, duplicate again, bring it up a little bit, and then let's select all those three and just kind of bring them down to ground level a bit, round about there. 
So I, I think it's up to you. I mean, I've just done this nice and quick to kind of illustrate how we can create something that looks a little bit threatening. I'm just going to add a black material to it now. So let's go to materials, right click, create, and let's go to uh, material down here. And we'll have this as black. And obviously we've dealt with materials before. We know what we're doing here. Let's set the color to black. And let's just drag the black material onto each of these. Uh, it's up to you what you want to do. You can make it shinier, you can make it darker. It's again, it, it's your game at the end of the day that you're creating here. So I'm going to leave mine as it is. So if we ever collide with this object, we want to be able to uh, effectively die or respawn. So what I'm going to do is each of those interior cubes, I'm going to turn off the collider because we don't need it and I'm going to place them inside the main column cube and they do look a little bit crazy so let's increase the size let's have it as two by in fact we'll just have it as one by one by one they do look crazy so this is one of the amazing quirks of unity now when you combine certain objects with each other they go a little crazy inside each other and to be honest, I'm happy with the effect that that's created. So it's entirely up to you how you want to deal with this. I mean, at the end of the day, as I always say, it's it's your game that you're creating here. It's not mine. It's yours. So I'll leave that as it is. So that looks kind of threatening, maybe. I don't know. Uh, but what I might do is I might attach uh, the rotation to it as well. So I'm going to rename this as Obstacle. Close that up, go to scripts, and we will attach the coin rotation. So I know it's not a coin, it doesn't matter too much, but at the end of the day, we can use this to our advantage and use same scripts for different things. And I'm going to change the rotate speed to three and see how this looks. Yep, so that looks pretty threatening, I would say. <laughs> So now we need to write a script to allow ourselves that when we collide with it, we get game over. To do that, we're going to replicate this uh, time up error. Well, error, I say it's a message, isn't it? So let's duplicate that. Let's bring it up to here and we'll say um, hurt text. And we'll say you collided with an obstacle and obviously that can be anything you can make that text say anything you want it's entirely up to you so what we're going to do is we're actually going to duplicate our coin collect script so hold control press d on coin collect and you've opened it up for some reason but that doesn't matter and we just need to rename this to obstacle i need to sort my uh, caps lock out obstacle collide and you will have an error don't worry about it too much and let's open up obstacle collide script and we just need to change the public class as well obviously because whenever a script name changes you need to make sure that you change the class name so obstacle collide now we don't need to have audio source on this so that can disappear which also means that we can get rid of this collect effects play we do, however, need to add in some more variables. And if we go to global time, we need to essentially replicate what we've done here. So we need to take these three variables from global time, which is time up text, fade out and player. We can copy those and place them inside obstacle collide. Let's also change time up text to obstacle text. And heading back to global time, what we need to do is the same kind of thing. So we need to have these here. So everything from player all the way down to the start coroutine, let's copy those lines of code. And I suppose this lesson is all about how you can reuse a lot of code with just a little bit of modification. So all of those go inside that if statement and you will get a couple of errors, but don't worry about those for now. So basically we're saying here, if 
the player collides with whatever object this will be attached to, then we turn off the player controls. We can get rid of the seconds because we're not dealing with seconds in this one. Time up text becomes obstacle text. Fade out will occur. And then there's the start coroutine, which we're going to call, in fact, we'll keep it as respawning level. And that also means that we can copy and paste this respawning level coroutine from global time and place it at the bottom of obstacle collide. And that will get rid of that error. Obviously, we need to add in the uh, namespace because we're dealing with scene management here. So using Unity Engine dot scene management semicolon and save the script so let's review what is going to happen here so this script will be attached to our spinning obstacle and as soon as the player collides with it we are going to turn off the player controls we're going to bring on that obstacle text we're going to fade out and we're going to start this coroutine which means that after three seconds, we are going to reload our scene. So let's head back into Unity and all errors should disappear. And they do. So obstacle collide script now goes on our obstacle right there. And let's set those three variables. So obstacle text is the hurt text that we called. And I guess you can rename things at any point if you want to. Uh, fade out goes on there and obviously the player as the third variable so let's try this out now ah, of course there is one extra thing that we didn't do have you guys spotted it hopefully you have we haven't ticked is trigger so let's tick it while we're in game now and let's see the effects take place real time so that is a nice little way, so I actually should say, that is a nice little way of being able to see what's going on in real time. However, if we go into it now, it's still not going to occur because we've ticked it during play. So this is a nice little lesson to establish things that you can and can't do during real time play. So we turned that is trigger on whilst we were playing in the game. However, when we stop or reload the scene, everything resets back to normal. So if we tick that now, everything should be fine. But if it isn't ticked and you do tick it during play, then you will have to re-tick it when you're not in play mode. Okay, we collided with Anne. Not sure who Anne is, but let's sort that out. Let's go to our hurt text. Let's change that. Let's set it back on. Let's double click to have a look. And we just need to lengthen that a little bit and realign it to the center right there. Let's turn it back off and let's check this out one more time. Cool. Still doesn't say it. We obviously need to extend it a little bit more. So hurt text. A bit more and center it turn off again one more time cool you collided with an obstacle and we respawn so I'm gonna place a couple of these around now just as some groovy obstacles if people still use the word groovy I'm not sure. Um, yeah, so you essentially can use pretty much anything. You don't have to use the weird twirly thing I've created here. It's um, it's entirely up to you what you want to create. There's no right or wrong. It's your game, as I keep saying. So next tutorial, what I think we're going to do is we are going to create some um, level completed UI. So when we picked up enough coins, so there's five coins in this level, when we've collected the fifth one, we uh, complete the level. So we're going to arrange that via some scripting. So until that next video, guys, thank you very much for watching.